So here is what you're trying to do. What is this? When you got now yours is a different color. Huh? What is it? This is a recombinant DNA. We're well, kind of DNA is genes from two sources. So we're using a color code to help us kind of figure it out. You now you guys, yours was uh, you got two sheets of paper. Yours is gonna be on yellow, and then the pink is gonna be the bacterial DNA. So it's the it's kind of opposite here. This is uh, this is like representing your yellow. Yeah, your yellow. So this is your this is your desired gene. When you're trying to do recombinant DNA, first thing is get your desired gene. And then you want to have a vector. Okay, so let's go ahead and this is let's talk. How do you get from these different uh, segments of DNA to something that becomes? When we say recombinant DNA, we also add in the word functional. Functional means that this back the bacteria that takes this circular loop called a plasmid. So first off, the plasmid is like this. Ignore this green part in it. So it's this is your the DNA in the plasmid. What happens is with the restriction enzymes, it's going to cut, cut, and it's going to insert this. Now imagine this being, say, insulin. So what we do, we take the gene for him, so insulin, a eukaryotic gene from us, right, from humans, and we stick it in a prokaryote, and this prokaryote shells out the product. What does it do? Transcription, translation. We're tr that's what it means to say functional recombinant DNA is not only did we splice genes from two sources and have a transgenic organism, we have the organism that's making something that it didn't have when it got it when it was first born. It's doing something else. So let's go over the directions on how to do this. We're going to do this. It's going to be a couple parts. So I want to reposition the camera. So let me just pause real quickly. And all right, we're back. Now what you have to do is the DNA that is your desired gene that has to be um, in this sequence. So you've got to cut one through six. Your partner has the plasmid. This can be in any pattern. However, when you tape it together, make sure that these little gray areas, these are recognition sites. This is where an enzyme will cut. So don't put these on the end or else you're going to have a problem. So what you're going to have is you're going to have, let's see, just kind of wave it in front. Oops. So here's this sequence that they put together. All right. Then they randomly, and this is going to be different for every group, you're going to put together your plasmid. And then what you have to do, I'll just use the uncut out parts. Hold that. You're going to get three restriction enzymes. And what you have to do is go through and find the match. And when you see that, when you find your match, you're going to cut it out. And that's how you get your sticky ends. That's going to help you cut it out. This is the enzyme that will temporarily cut and break those hydrogen bonds. And it's unequal, so now what you do is you can use that to piece together, and now you have your functional gene. Here's what you have to fo focus on, though, okay? I'm giving you three enzymes. Depending on what you do with this will determine. You don't know which one you're going to use uh, when you first put it together, but what you're going to have to do is you. This is uh, when you put it together, if you have more than one cut, then that's not the one you use. So one of these enzymes will be the one that is your restriction enzyme. How do you identify it? If this matches up with more than one time, you don't use it. If this matches up more than one, so you're going to have these three, only one of these shows up once, and that's the one you're going to use. Why? When you act, if you look at here, remember, this is your, your DNA, that's the plasmid. It will cut here, cut here, and it will allow you to insert this ribbon. So you only want an enzyme that will make one cut. If you if you have two cuts, then you don't use that. This makes three cuts, don't use that. Say that has it, it'll use that's the one that you're gonna use. All right, what I want to do is gonna make a second part, which is you guys actually going through. So you're gonna make your make your enzyme. No, I'm sorry, you're gonna make your DNA that has to be this order. This is gonna be totally random. That's why everyone in the group Every, every group is going to have a different little com combo. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll film different groups trying to match it up, and then we'll get a little combo. We'll get all the student work. All right, that is the directions. Now, remember, what are we doing this with? We have, we've been talking about our vocabulary list. So we're actually using restriction enzymes. We're actually using, uh, making a, taking a plasmid. We're splicing genes. 
and we're using a vector so that we can get a recombinant DNA. All right. So lastly, you got your directions right here. So this is what's going to happen. Go ahead. Um, so I made a model recombinant DNA uh, by searching for three different enzymes in the. Um, so these are the three that you use. Yep. Okay. Um, and I found I uh, searched for them in the plasmid, so there was only uh, one uh, pattern that matched it. Yeah. And I found it to be the Hindi um, enzyme and um, uh, cut it and then found uh, a similar pattern in the DNA or the yellow paper. Okay. And that's, that's your target, that's your source gene that you're trying to splice in there. Yep. And um, cut it out and rematched it to their corresponding nucleotides okay. and um, created the uh, recombinant DNA. Okay, so let's back up and get the big picture here. All right, so, that, so that's your whole loop. So this is functional DNA, and this is bacteria as in eukaryotic. This is, um, no, bacteria as in prokaryote, and this is eukaryote. So what recombinant DNA is taking a eukaryote gene and sticking it in a, a prokaryote, and this prokaryote is going to mass produce this. If it mass produces it, it's a functional recombinant DNA. All right, let's have a hand for my student, and like you like yours, Brantley.